So I'm going to ask you a question on this and uh, you just have to put the answers in as many as you like. It's a, it's a word thing. So give me three positive words about you working remotely. Three positive words about you working remotely. And let's see through this amazing kind of world word cloud. The sort of, can you see that then? That's what we get. Family, flexibility, influence, capability, difference, challenging, less effective, balance, connection, mindfulness, distractions. Lovely. Thank you for that. The second one, and these are the only two interactive bits of today apart from our conversations. The second question, three negatives about you working remotely. It doesn't have to be three. It can be as many as you like, but some words that sum up the negatives about working remotely. Are you ready? Here we go. Thank you for that. Closing it. Let's have a look at some of the negatives about working remotely. Isolation, isolated, lonely, boring, tiring, vulnerable, boundaries, boredom. Thank you for that. Really interesting, isn't it? And I think you sum up exactly what we're all going through at the moment. Let's give you some of the stats um, that some of the people have discovered over the last, uh, last few weeks of us being in lockdown. I find these fascinating. 49.2% yeah, of adults in employment are working from home as a result of COVID, right? Almost half the working population who are still working are working from home as a result of this. 72% of the HR people, and this has been a, a thing that came up on LinkedIn, agree that work flexibility will be important for the future. I think we've all discovered about being flexible and working from home, it's gonna be a whole new world. Well, the HR people say that's gonna be what the future is gonna look like. And I, I found this fascinating. 99% of people who choose to work remotely would at least part-time for the rest of their careers. Yeah. Do you agree with that, guys? After discovering this, we'd all like to do at least some of it from home. And how about this, guys? For those of people who are here employing lots of people, 69% of millennials will trade other benefits. I'm not quite sure what the other benefits are for the flexible work options, including remote work. Guys, welcome to the new world. Everything's changed. So here we go. However, although remote work enables employees to work everywhere, 84% of them would prefer to work from home. I'm not sure they're the ones with family and pets and other people all in lockdown with you. But you know, that, that was the survey, that's what came out. 74% said uh, that if they had the option of working from home, they'd be less likely to leave their company. Now, isn't that interesting? Whether anybody's gonna leave any company at the moment until they find out what's gonna happen, but 74% would make them less likely to leave. So as a way of keeping your workforce with you and engaged. And of course, I just thought I'd put down there some of the benefits that come from working from home, office costs, staff retention, we talked about that, environmental benefits. I mean, three planes today, and I'm talking about it. Normally, we get three planes going across, you wouldn't even bat an eyelid. Higher morale, mm, we'll explore that a little bit, and a wider talent pool. When you can do this with anybody anywhere around the world, why should we think in terms of boxes that we all get together and sit around a table? So the world is going to change. That I saw on um, the New York Times. And I thought, wow, look how things have changed. I don't know how many of you used to use Zoom a lot before this, but guess we're all on it now and it's gonna be the way it's gonna be. And that's just the uptick, as they say, I don't like uptick, but that's exactly the way it's gone. However, let's very briefly touch on the downside. Half of remote employees say they feel disconnected. Interesting, that reflects what you did on your word cloud just then from other employees. Loneliness, 19% said loneliness. We had lo loneliness on the word cloud as well. Let me just, I don't really see that come up, right? Um, and what about unplugging after work? Quick show of hands. Anybody struggle to turn off? It's an always on society, isn't it? We don't stop, we keep going, yeah? Quick show of hands as well. How many people have suddenly discovered themselves still online, working, Nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. George, let's do it. I, I don't know you found the same thing over the past few, few months now, as it is now, a few weeks, few months. I've found myself sort of coming in at odd times and, and just doing stuff. What does that all say? The need to inspire your audience from a distance 
is just going to go like that, isn't it? And today, uh, I thought, wouldn't it be good to talk about some of the skills we'll need to inspire the audience, connect with the audience, and really make a difference? So a couple of quick things. One is my favorite quote of all time. And if you haven't got this quote on your wall, print it off and stick it on your wall. Because it is so true in connection for all of you who are experienced about going on stage and everything else. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's a positive and a negative in that. If you are leading people and they don't feel good about it, well, all the things we talked about, the opportunity now to work elsewhere remotely could take them away from you. You don't want that to happen. If you make them feel good, though, if you make them feel really excited about being there and wanting to be there, guess what? You're going to have, hang on to them for quite a long time. So that works. So all this remote communication is, is vital as part of that. Everything I talk about is in journeys. If you've been with us for the last six sessions, thank you, firstly. I talk about journeys a lot because life is a journey and we have little journeys in all the stuff we do. So remote connection is a journey too. The advice would be the simple stuff. Who's on the journey? Yeah. Who do you want to influence and persuade? Who are your audience? Now, forgive me. I better say, I always say audience. My life has been in front of audiences. I can't get out the habit. I always say sort of audiences. So who are your audience? Who do you want to persuade and influence? Who do you want to make a difference to? Are you very clear about that? And Jeremy's got something really excited to talk about as a tool to do that, which we shall share later. Secondly, what is your outcome for your audience journey? What do you want them? And I always say this, and if you want to write it down, please feel free. What will they think and do when they walk away and how long will they think and do it for is the only reason we do it. It's true, isn't it? Every meeting, every opportunity to persuade and influence, if you're selling something to someone, what will they think and do when they walk away? How long will they think and do it for is a measure of your success. But are you clear about it? Are you clear about what you want them to walk away thinking and doing? I know there are loads of people in this world who do the shotgun approach. Yeah, I, I often call it mud against a wall approach. I'm going to throw loads of stuff at you and just hope that you take some of it away with you. We've all been in presentations like that. We've all probably been sold to like that as well. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. It's a whole new world. So instead of doing that, how about thinking slightly differently about this, right? Who are your audience? What's the outcome? What do you want them to think and do when they walk away? And how long do you want them to think and do it for? So... Video is going to be one of the most powerful ways we do that, thus the call today. How can we be better at video? How can we really make a difference by using cameras and lenses? Now, I'm going to talk a little later about how you perhaps a few tools and tips for influencing, persuading, and inspiring your audience that you can take away today and use and play with and try out. Before that, though, I'm going to introduce someone else to you. Now, my friend Jeremy. Jeremy and I have known each other for years and years and years ago. In fact, it shows how old I am. Jeremy came to us when he was a student, when we had a, a radio station. Uh, and he was great on that. Since then, and that was 20 years ago, which is, which is kind of scary in a way. Uh, since that, he's been a, a director, cameraman on all sorts of programs. He's worked in entertainment shows. He's worked on X Factor. He's worked on Strictly. He's worked on Brit Britain's Got Tam Talent. He's produced and shot shows at Wembley's where we Shania Twain, Bono, Bon Jovi, Dua Lipa. You're getting the idea here. He, he kind of knows what he's talking about. Bit. He's passionate about video. Uh, and over the last few years, he's immersed himself in everything digital. So I'm delighted. To, is he blushing? I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> delighted to, I'm delighted to say that Jeremy is going to join us today to chat a little bit about some tips and tricks. So I'm going to hand over to Jeremy. Hopefully Jeremy will come in full view for you. Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Unfortunately, um, there isn't like a, a hugely sort of sexy headline in terms of how to make good content in terms of video. It all starts with planning and actually a large part of it, well, the main bit of it is to really understand and know your audience so that you know who you're talking to and obviously that then leads on to you being able to tailor your message specifically to that, to that group of people. There's, a, there's some really good tools to enable you to really drill down and understand who your audience 
um, or who your audiences are, that's the thing. With this whole new brave um, kind of digital world, with things like uh, Facebook ads and all those kind of d um, digital ads, you can really be super niche and, and, and really kind of drill down to really, really very specific sets of people. But obviously you need to know who those people are and, and, and be able to um, target uh, and, and message them in the right way so that you're, you know, whatever you want them to do, they end up doing, whether it's selling, whether it's just giving them information, whether it's warming them up as a prospect, whatever. Um, so using a thing uh, like a customer avatar, basically it takes you through the process and asks you loads and loads of questions. It's a bit of a, it, it, it's not um, the easiest piece of work to do and it's quite, it, it is very comprehensive, but once you've done it once, it's absolutely brilliant. And, and, and it really, really, uh, having done it kind of the last couple of months for my business, it really, really gives you a handle on exactly who your target audience for particular service or product or whatever, um, it, you know, who you're absolutely talking talking to. And importantly, it allows you to, to work out where they are online, as in, you know, where do they exist? What platforms do they frequent? Because obviously, if you know, for example, that, um, you know, that your target market is on LinkedIn, well, LinkedIn content's going to be different and have a different slant to, for example, if you're wanting to find those people on Facebook, um, it has huge knock on effects in terms of how you go about producing that content. It doesn't mean that it will take you longer to do it. It just means that you need to be, you need to go, like John was saying earlier, you need to go in with the end in mind so you need to understand who you're talking to but also really critically who what do you want them to do off the back of your content or your video once you've gone through the the, the customer avatar process which we are going to uh, let you have a copy of it's it's it, it it just takes you through and builds a real character of the type of people that you're that you're targeting you know in your business you might actually target you know there might be sort of four or five even maybe more groups of, of people that you that you offer your products or services to or you interact with equally there may be just one or two but it's it, it really is critical and it's it is really the foundations to creating um some really really good and and effective content the where so like i said before once you know who you're talking to and you really I mean, you really know them you 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 know where they live online um why is that important because like i said before each platform has different rules in the sense of you know for example facebook's really really helpfully got you know you might want to do a video on a phone for example okay so we all go and and, and we're we're going to film in landscape tele mode um and then accept that when you're doing it when you're doing stories the ratio is that well that's really helpful isn't it now if you if you're planned about it you you know that well okay i can film this in landscape but i need to make sure that the important element of whatever i'm filming is in that central little square because this for um facebook stories for example and also for instagram and stuff like that it's portrait mode square one by one so you need to know all of that kind of thing and you need to have made those decisions before you go out or you jump in front of a camera um, because obviously it has, uh, you know, huge implications in terms of um, uh, in, in terms of how you produce that video content. Um, also, the other thing as well, which is massively handy, obviously, is each of the each of the platforms have completely different rules and uh in this well i say rules they're sort of guidelines but what you'll find is when you start producing i don't know if any any of you guys are producing video at the moment but what you'll be finding is that you know if you're doing a uh, an insta uh thing for example they are super short I and mean, it's a bit like tiktok it's it's 15 seconds maximum um you know youtube you can run things longer the optimum kind of running time for youtube is about seven and a half minutes but with YouTube, I mean, this, these, this is a subject for an entire kind of Zoom thing on its own, really. But um, YouTube, it's good to, to vary it up. So sort of seven and a half minutes is great. But then every now and again, do a longer version. It basically allows you to dig in, you know, going in a bit more detail um, for whatever, whatever sort of subject you're talking about. Um, Facebook, again, 
when you actually look at um, all the guidance on Facebook, they say 30 seconds they is what they recommend. Although personally, I've done stuff where I would never go more than a minute and a half, two minutes. People's, you know, people's attention spans are like goldfish, literally at the moment. Um, so, you know, keep it properly snappy. And the other thing to say whilst we're talking about these things is that you really, and I know John um, in, in one of his previous chats um, was talking about the grab it's you know you really need to hook people in and you need to be doing that within three or well you know within the first 20 seconds there's some brilliant resources actually online that if you just google for things like youtube there are definite structures that these things take um but but what all of the platforms have in common is the need to really hook your audience very quickly and if people don't you what you've got to think about is that you've got to stop that scroll you know, we're all kind of scrolling through things and it's 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 um, it's about arresting that scroll and then people tapping on it. And then within seconds, you need to get to the get to the meat and bones of what you're talking about so they can make a decision. Oh, this is interesting or no, it's not. So, I mean, I would really, really steer away from, it, you know, you know, very, very expansive, exotic kind of intro sequences and stuff like that equally. Um, all these kind of big waffly intros about who you are and how great you are. No one cares. I hate to break it to you, but no one cares. They want, you know, they want the content. They want the good stuff. So, you know, the quicker you get to that, the better. Um, I mean, fundamentally, really, it all comes down to respecting the audience's time. They've chosen to invest their time in in listening and, and watching you. I mean, it goes for all kinds of content, really. But, you know, they've chosen to be there with you. So don't sort of abuse that that trust that they put in you that um you know and, and and waste their time by just kind of waffling around the point having said all that i don't want you to be in in a pit of um despondency and please don't throw your laptop away because you think oh i've got to you know make 75 different in you know 75 different pieces of content every week to go on each platform because there is there is a solution the way around all of this and the way to really kind of quickly and efficiently create content and again it comes back to the whole planning piece the more planned you are the better organized you are it will pay dividends massively when it comes to you actually physically creating the content so batch recording just let me explain that quickly um it, it it's the idea that you in your very very busy diary will set up one or two days to just create content um, now, if you're doing stuff like this, so like in a, in a webcam situation, what I do is, you know, you'll have you'll have created, you'll have scripted maybe or done some bullet points or whatever, but you fundamentally know I'm going to talk about this, then I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to do a video about this. Um, maybe change it up, have a couple of shirts or or whatever, so that people don't think you've just sat there and when they watch, you know, the next three weeks of your content, they're going, they've had that shirt on for three weeks. Um, but you know, so do a little bit of that, that sort of thing works very well, but effectively the idea is that you want to allot some time that is just devoted to you creating content so that you're not then kind of halfway through your week and thinking, oh my God, my gosh, I've got to, I haven't done something for LinkedIn or I need to do this, that and the other. As I say, it all comes back to planning a lot of time in your diary to, to, um, to create this content and then batch record it. Um, it just becomes so much, so much easier. And the other thing to do is to, rather than kind of, it can get, I mean, I know it can get so like um, overwhelming with, you know, or Facebook wants it one by one or 16 by nine or whatever it is, just concentrate on doing one big chunk of content per week, let's say. Um, and out of that big long chunk of content what you want to be doing is structuring it in a way that you can cut down into little chunks and those are the little chunks that you then will go and put on LinkedIn so a minute and a half goes on to LinkedIn and then um, you know maybe a sort of a minute and 15 minute 20 can go onto Facebook or you could use the same you know the same chunk of um, footage that's that works I've done that before um, uh, and then obviously for things like Insta if you're on Insta then you, you need to do something super compact like a little 15 minute sting or whatever but the but the fundamental thing is start start with your big piece of content that you then put on something like youtube um and then and then subdivide it down um that will make it so much easier to produce for you now in terms of running times like i've said before it's about seven and a half minutes um to about sort of 15 to 20 i've seen stuff that's a lot longer than that you know on on youtube you get stuff that goes on for an hour or so 
I, the, I think the jury's out. It really depends on what your niche is, what the subject matter is, and how engaged your audience is on that as to whether people will stick around for that, that amount of time. Facebook, big thing to remember. I mean, again, I don't want to sort of teach you guys how to suck eggs. Facebook is not for selling. Do not sell on Facebook. It is about warming the audience up. It's information, and especially now during COVID, people, the whole kind, it's, it's incredible how the whole kind of digital marketing thing has shifted and the tone of conversation. Frankly, at the moment, it's about helping people really. Um, because, and even if you're kind of doing it with an ulterior motive, even that seems to come across as being really disingenuous. So personally, I'd go be very careful if that's kind of what you're doing that, you know what I mean? I think you've just got to be pretty straightforward and genuinely want to help people on Facebook. And again, Facebook and well, all of these, all of these platforms, they're a long game. They're not a magical kind of traffic um, tap. All of these things, they, you know, when you're when you're pr um, producing content, it takes probably three, six months before you start to get real traction. But when you do start to get traction, it's one of those really delicious upward curves. Um, you know, the more people that get involved, the more people that that, that enjoy what you do and um, and the more feedback you get, obviously, you can it, it's it's a two way conversation, like John was saying, you know, you, you understand more about what your audience is after and then you can deliver it. Um, as I say, LinkedIn is about one to two minutes um, for a LinkedIn thing. LinkedIn have been quite late to the game, really, in some respects. I mean, Facebook, they do Facebook lives, which is a, another thing for another day. Um, LinkedIn have now started to do LinkedIn lives, but relatively recently. Um, it's still kind of, from my point of view, I am uploading stuff to LinkedIn, but it's really hard to work out kind of the optimum length for stuff because, you know, if you if you look at the kind of stuff on Google about it, they they claim that they are kind of, oh, let's make it 30 seconds. But the my instinct would say with the audience that you've got there, the type of people that are on that platform, actually there 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 is more of an appetite and and this has been borne out by my stuff that i've put up there so far i think you can run it slightly longer not as long as youtube but it's certainly a couple of minutes again as long as it's really relevant and you know gets to the point doesn't waste people's time that kind of thing uh, instagram like i said 15 seconds if you're on instagram good luck but no i mean insta's great but it's very very kind of almost quite throwaway um uh, right, so with all that fantastic um, sort of workflow stuff, how do you come up with the ideas? Right, and this is this is something that comes up a lot when you start talking to people about, well, you know, you should be posting once a day on LinkedIn and, you know, twice a week or whatever it is on the other platforms. You've got to come up with the ideas, right, for, for, for what people want to hear. Now, um, the first thing I'd do, uh, and the first thing I do do when I'm working with people is we look at your competitors and we work out what are they doing. Um, and you'll be surprised sometimes in certain niches um, that I've, uh, you know, you're kind of, you've, generally I think people feel like they're quite late to the game on the video side of things, but actually it's still, it, it doesn't seem like that, honestly. Um, have a look at your niche, have a look at what your competitors are doing and, and also, note what platforms they're using because if they're if they are good competitors in the sense of that you know they're 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 not complete nutter jokers they will be doing they will be having a strategy and i'm sure that you guys have got some kind of um, social media strategy as well so they'll be they'll have been researched behind why they are on the 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 platforms that they're on have a look at their posts what are they posting What's the top? What sort of topics are they um, are they talking about? Are they posting videos? Are they doing static posts? Are they doing you know infographics and all that kind? Just have a look. Do not copy it, but just let's say be influenced by it and put your own spin on it. The trouble is with with um, you know just sort of doing a, a a cut and paste job is that it's not in your voice and it and it's so easy to see that you've just basically lifted it from somewhere else. And also the other thing, which is the main reason not, well, ethically it's not, it stinks a bit, but I would definitely not do it because um, Google um, and the search engines are very, very good at splotting plagiarism. So, you know, um, the other thing to do as well is Google, look at, literally type in what your um, clients would type in as search, um, search terms, and you will get a lot of allied search terms now those are things that people genuinely have actually um clicked on so 
they might be questions or they might be uh, long tail keywords or whatever those that's absolute absolute golden information that you can then package your content around so you you're in other words you know what people are looking for the other thing to do is where's that gone there it is um at the bottom of google when you do you, you, so you have your, your main little bit um at the top and then at the bottom of the page after you've got all the listings there's the kind of people also search for bit that is also fantastic because again that's a great source of content ideas what are the questions people are actually asking google for and the thing is if you with all of these things with google if you're answering the question exactly how it's being typed into google then guess what happens to your post when you put those that that form of words in your ranking shoots up eventually again it's a long it's a longer term game it's not going to happen overnight but it over a period of weeks it will um you know Google is all about relevance. It wants people to use Google, obviously, and provide really, really uh, relevant information. The other thing, which is, is a gold, little gold, cheeky little gold nugget, this one, answerthepublic.com. If you've not heard of it, it's absolute genius. What you do, uh, definitely write this down, guys. Um, go there, type in your uh, niche or whatever you do or service or whatever. That then comes up with, it's what this, this website does is it scrapes all the search data from Bing, from Google, from all the different search engines and collates it in a really very nice graphical way. So you you will get um, a, a graphical representation of the questions people are asking to do with your niche. Absolute genius. It's And, and it's free, which is even better. Um, it's an absolutely brilliant way of coming up with ideas. And the thing is as well, once you start creating content, there'll be stuff that... Um, you know, will we'll come off that will branch off that because you go, actually, if I've done something about, you know, for example, if I've done something about uh, editing, well, actually, it might be worth doing something about how you upload a video. Do you see what I mean? So it things will follow from each other. And also the other thing to say is when you're putting out this content, interact, ask questions to your audience. The more interaction um, you, you, you get involved with, um, the more the, the more lively your channels look like so for example on youtube if you've got comments that come in under your video always always reply to them i would do that and whatever you know obviously linkedin it's just nice isn't it if someone says that was great thanks very much well just go yeah thanks i'm glad you enjoyed it or whatever but the, the bottom line is the more active those posts are i.e the more comments likes shares those all shove the um the posts up the 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 rankings and um, because the bottom line for all these platforms is they want people to stay on the platform so the more interactive and the more sticky the content is the better and they they will love you for it so let's just very very quickly get techie i'm not going to show you how to like um you know like a massive feature film this is literally how to do something like this so let's just keep it super simple i'd suggest first up right so let's talk about doing something like this how and and um I'm not going to I'm not going to mention Paul Collins, but he does does look like he's on he's on crime watch because the <laughs> because he is a shad he's a shadow. <laughs> now Paul, I don't know Paul. Paul might have done that deliberately, but I kind of miss seeing Paul's beautiful face. So what would be lovely in that situation would be if Paul switched turned himself around a bit so that the light was coming onto his face. Now here, I've got a window which is over there. No, Paul, don't feel bad. Ah, oh, there we are. Look at Paul. Hello, Paul. Um, I feel dreadful. Um, yeah, so basically to start with, I'd just keep it simple, not get too bogged down in the lighting side of thing. Literally just, you know, use natural light where you can. It's really, really, um, it's, it's, it's often very diffuse and it's very, very complimentary. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a really good point to start so rather evidently in this in, in this uh, lovely little graphic just face yourself towards the daylight um, and also in terms of background if you can I understand sometimes people are in little kind of cramped spaces or whatever try and keep make there be some um, distance between you and the background because with these cameras on webcams they're what's called depth of field so the point the point at which they're in focus is actually 
quite quite a big distance they've got quite a big depth of field which is a deliberate thing um on if you're doing things on dslrs and all that thing i don't want to get too into that but um you can you can you can you're a bit more in control of of the depth of field and you so you can throw the background out but the the idea being you don't want people to be distracted by um the background it's all about you in this inst in this one instance it's all about you making sure you're the focus um so yeah ideally don't like the background if you can help it um the background should be should be darker than 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 the, the subject of of the um of the frame um now if you wanted to get posh and do some lighting stuff these things here on the right hand that that is a ring light they are about you can get them for about i think 80 quid on amazon something like that obviously you'd need to stand imagine if you're just um shooting on your phone literally what you'd do is you'd have the light in front of me here and i would poke my phone through the ring light there it's a very very complimentary light um, very flattering and it basically uh, was used for portrait photography for, for ages and it will make you look like this guy down here do you see like the light the in the eyes you've got a very nice kind of little rings around the eyes it's very very it's very flattering light so that is a very if you want to do the lighting thing that with one light is a great way to start um all the lots of vloggers on uh, youtube and everyone uses that that sort of setup right so now let's talk about framing shall we let's do that now this lovely gentleman here um what you want to do is try and frame according to the rule of thirds i'm not going to waffle on but the rule of thirds is a thing that um it's just the way that your your eye perceives uh, pictures and things like that and what what your brain th thinks is a is a pleasing aesthetic pl aesthetically pleasing frame what you want to do is have your eyes two-thirds of the way up the frame and you need to be roughly he says now altering his where he is but you kind of need to be in the middle um, and for these kind of things like a head and shoulders is is absolutely perfect what you want to try and avoid and i'm not going to put pick on anyone what you want to try and avoid is 75 feet of headroom just in case a plane flies through um all the, the the reason i i'm you know i'm a cameraman so i get a bit pernickety about these sort of things also my, yeah just think about what's in the background if you're doing i mean obviously it depends if you're doing a family quiz it doesn't matter but if you're doing something for b2b kind of stuff you just need to kind of bear that in mind right i mean yesterday um we were we, myself and john were talking about um, trying to level up his camera and stuff because all the angles were off and it's one of those things that actually if you just pay a little bit of attention to these elements actually it makes for a much nicer <laughs> uh, viewing experience and you don't want to give anyone any reason for being distracted like the guy there with his all brown packet in the background you know the people aren't going to be concentrating on, on, on what that i mean sure he had something amazing to say but everyone's going to be wondering what that all brand pack well certainly i would be uh anyway onwards um the the other thing which is huge and as a, as a cameraman really pains me to admit it's all about the sound having told you all about framing and stuff and um, giving paul some grief it's actually all about the sound um you really 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 need to get this right because ultimately you can i hate to admit it you can get away with slightly dodgy visuals but if people can't hear you it's game over you'll literally lose the audience in seconds so i would definitely 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 invest in good microphones um, and luckily today um, we have got um, a fantastic model in the shape of mr john hammond from just outside huddersfield um, and and he is wearing what is called a lavalier mic now one of those basically john's mic there is plugged straight in i believe to the um camera isn't it so that uh, yeah so that that little setup is brilliant because it's very directional even if it's an inline mic like you know you've got on you this is a thing from the phone but you know like if you've got a little inline mic like that that will be absolutely fine that will be better than using your microphone in the computer i mean this thing here i'm just gonna bit of product placement so this whole little setup here was about a couple of hundred quid um but you don't you know i mean unless you're doing loads of it you don't you th this is kind of a little bit overkill i would suggest um oh look so at, yes Jeremy, for that it, it, these are little um clever little uh microphones 
which work really, really well. They're blue mics, you know, little, little Eskimo mics, but that, that works incredibly well and gives you a very good sound if you're doing podcasting, so you can justify the, uh, the cost. Sorry, Jeremy, carry on. Listen, guys, I hope it's not too kind of... I know it's, it's um, kind of we're, we're whisking through this at a right, rapid pace, but I hope you're getting value from it. Um, yeah, so basically, the, the, so the, the mic, I mean, that's amazing that you, you picked up that mic for 14 quid. That's, that's incredible. So there's also um, the other thing that I found, which I th has been getting some pretty good reviews, is one of these things. Um, so basically, that is a, is a um, wireless Bluetooth mic for your uh, phone. Um, so again, if you're walking around, and, and also that comes with a little wing gag that you can pop on the top. So you literally clip that on and it will it will transmit directly to your phone. It's about 130 quid. But when you're doing, you know, side by side comparisons of the phone, you know, inbuilt phone mic and that, I mean, absolutely brilliant. And the, the excellent and I'm, honestly, I'm not on some kind of retainer with these either. But the other good thing about those things is that they've got inbuilt noise attenuation as well. So they suppress the background noise, which if you're out and about, if you're doing stuff that's out and about, on your phone and i mean to be to be completely honest with with the new iphone sort of 11 the you know the video quality and the camera quality on the, on those is absolutely incredible so you know to start off with you literally just i'm going to embarrass myself because i am android never mind but you know you can use your phone and i would encourage you to do that but yeah just when it comes to the sound just don't compromise um because it will it, it has a it does have a direct effect um, and, you know, bad sound will lose your audience within seconds and they won't come back either. Um, but th with all of this, all of the tech, don't let the tech and all of that be a barrier to you starting. Just get started because, I mean, there was someone, I was, I was watching a thing the other day and they were saying, you know, no one was born, unless it was John Hammond, no one was born an amazing presenter, right? I mean, and I'm testament to that. But um you know, you've got to start somewhere. And the key thing is that you start. Um, there's so much uh, opportunity now with with the um, with the webcams, with all these amazing apps and stuff. Just get going. And, and in terms of getting your business top of mind, now is a brilliant time to start doing that. And, and like I say, as long as your 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 kind of messaging and your tone is right and you're not, you know, and you're and you're doing appropriate things for the appropriate platform, which comes back to the planning thing. As long as you've done all of that legwork, I mean, just crack on, guys, and do it, um, you know, and and what's the worst thing that happens is that no one watches it. And you might have a little cry into your biscuits, but no one it's not like you're on telly and you've made a, a bit, you know, a horrendous mistake is it so with all of this though don't forget it really isn't about you or us it's about your audience so never forget that always anytime you're making any content that has to be front and center all the time i hope you've got some kind of sense out of all that <laughs> And I'm going to hand you right over to uh, Mr. John Hammond. Let me just very quickly zip in the... Vince said, Jeremy, is this per person? Um, Vince, what, what was that one? Do you want to unmute yourself and just ask the question? No? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you spoke about the avatar, were you mean creating an avatar per person in the audience or an avatar that represents the audience? Exactly that, yes, Vincent. So yes, should have been a bit clearer. It's you, you it's it's per, per per customer type, if that makes sense. So it right. you know, you might you you know to I mean you might be so for example, for me, for our video production company, I am talking to business owners, I'm talking to entrepreneurs, I'm also talking to the marketing directors. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So each of those people have we've created separate avatars. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they share, they definitely share a lot, but there are different, definite kind of differences. And those, those so are the things when you're... We're talking about basically an avatar for a demographic group, aren't we? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, I say, it goes into quite a lot of detail. It, it, it's a little bit tedious, but I tell you what, it's really worth doing if you can. Yeah. 
The, the other thing I always do, I, I've, for those people I've worked with, uh, they know I have six principles. The first principle is be the audience, which is shorthand for get inside the audience's head. The more you really understand the, the audience, the more you'll be able to persuade and influence them and connect with them. And they're more likely to walk away thinking and doing what you want them to. So be the audience is the first one. The second one is a whiffum, which you may have heard of many times, but what's in it for them? Because that's what they're interesting excited about you've been lovely people you joined us for an hour we've almost finished but uh you've kindly given us your time right but hopefully you were thinking before i came on oh i might learn something that's useful for me on that i might be able to take that and do something with it next week week after or anything like that so so that's what every member of your audience will be thinking and so we started by saying what's the start point the start point is be the audience what's in it for them understand them the out point is what will they do and think when they walk away from you and how long will they do and think it for? Because that is what will make the big deal of difference. We've got about three minutes. If you want to pop any questions up there very, very quickly for, for Jeremy on the session. I'm going to, uh, I was originally going to talk a lot more about the psychology behind it. I'll do that next, next session. Um, and in fact, I will try and make sure that in fact, if you are free guys, is it a week on Thursday? Um, says me checking my diary at the same time. I believe it is. I will send you an email anyway with uh, Jeremy's avatar. Yeah, uh, and the information you talked about then. So I'll do that as a PDF attachment. But also, we'll, we'll do the next session. What about the psychology of doing it? So we've talked about the physicality of it and the video and the opportunities within it and the challenges as well. It's all very honest. But I want to talk next time about how do we really connect? How can we make that difference? Because, guys, that is a skill that is going to go up and up and up in terms of need. I had a lovely chat this morning um, with uh, a certain person who's actually on the call as well about what we're going to need for leaders of the future. Uh, we were chatting about it, really interesting conversation. I think leaders of the future are going to be able to pivot very quickly. So they're going to be able to turn quite quickly, change, see laterally, see the big picture. And they're going to have to be people who can persuade and influence even they're not in the same room. Because in, in the old days, your bosses sort of would, would say, do this. And in the old days, we'd say, yes, yeah, certainly. Now, especially for a lot of the younger generation, the boss says, do this. And the young generation says, why? And that's become more and more important. So persuasion, the art of persuasion influence is going to be really important. So on our next session, if you fancy joining us for it, we'll talk about that a lot more uh let's just do some questions on this any tips Jer uh, jeremy on easy editing the 10 minute block what would you suggest um i would start with three things like uh if you're on a mac something like imovie is a very very good starting point um there is also i, I think it's called open shot which is an open source um pc based editing software again i mean there's i mean actually on your phone there's some great um there's one actually by gopro i mean you have to have a look at it and make sure it's actually appropriate to because it's quite sort of adventure sports in terms of the graphics and stuff but there are some great um apps that sit on your phone and you can literally just drag the clips about put some graphics on put a little bit of music on and then you can export it straight up to um straight up to facebook or wherever you want to, to mm. put it in terms of platform but yeah i mean i'd i'd as a starting point for for slightly more grown-up stuff i'd look at imovie and as a starting point and something like um, OpenShot um, for the PC. I mean, there's loads. Um, Camtasia is very good. ScreenFlow is very good. That's that's a good basic. That those two are paid for, but they're quite much. You know, they're uh, I, I think they're a couple of hundred quid. I would suggest, Jeremy, possibly dip your toe with one of the free ones to just get used to the idea exactly. of editing digital material. It it, it honestly. Years ago, when, when we sat there with Avid and, and Jason, or uh, Jason's not with us, but he might be on the call, who, who was an expert in that, uh, but these amazing TV editing. I, I remember the old days of TV editing when you went from one tape to another tape to another and cut it by hand with, with, a, with a razor blade. Uh, thank God those days have gone. There are so many digital ways of doing it now. Dip your toe in it. If you have any questions, I'm going to put the contacts up for both Jeremy and I. Happy to answer any questions. And, and dip your toe with the freebie see how it works, see how you feel about it. So then when you actually, if you do think I can use this, it's the value to me, I can actually m make it worthwhile paying for, then it takes you to the next stage. Uh, final, David, um, where are we? Had a question there. Steve said, how about some coaching, John, about how to use body language, posture, how you present and talk. I'd be delighted to do that. Uh, week on Thursday, I'm 
penciling it for now. Uh, body language sounds good. David, happy to do that. Um, as a venue, a question from Martha in Hamburg. As a venue for culture and corporate events, would you recommend doing an online concert for 30 minutes live on Facebook? Probably a 30 minute co concert you could get away with, couldn't you? Because people want to go to it. Yes. And exactly. they, have, they have skin in the game. It's like a TV show. Yeah, as long as, and next time I'll talk about the kind of journey of keeping them involved and keeping them in the room with you, because that's really, really important too. Um, run out of time, guys, unfortunately. Jeremy, thank you very much. If you, just it's do that, just a round, round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I've discovered that the, the jazz hands are a round of applause on that. Oh, one. very good. So, so thank Jeremy, you thank very you very much. much indeed for it's that. It's a pleasure. Lovely, it's a pleasure. Lovely, lovely as always to have you with us. I'm going to finish by putting up the contact details on the screen. Bye bye, guys. Thank you.